Hey, what's up everybody? It's Fabio from Noise and today I want to show you how I made this track. with only this synth. What's up everybody, it's Fabio here from Noise. I am shocked. 5K? What? Are you guys kidding? Thank you so much for your support, but keep them coming because we're gonna do another giveaway at 10K, yet to be revealed. On another note, if you haven't already, but desire to do so, hit that like and subscribe button to keep these videos flying through the cyberspace straight to you. Okay, chances are you own a synth, right? Hardware or software, and you mainly use it to make melodies. I'm talking bass, plucks, leads, pads, and so on. But how many of you are using a synthesizer to make drums? Weird concept, right? Sometimes it pays off thinking outside the box and using a tool in a different way that's not primarily designed for its intended use. Now you can do this with pretty much any synth. I've decided to use the Korg Mini Log because apart from being my favorite synth on my synth rack, it's pretty versatile. I've got two oscillators, a noise oscillator, a pitch envelope generator, and one for the filter too. So if you guys like this and it goes well, I wanna start a mini series called One Synth, One Beat, where I take a synth, whatever it may be, and let me know if you have any suggestions and I try and make a beat from it. I'll try and essentially use the synth for something it's not designed to do, although it kind of is. Okay, first up, load an init program, and it should sound something like this. Now we're gonna pull the cutoff down and increase the resonance to the max. starting to get the picture already. Now let's edit the envelope generator and the attack decay, sustain and release of both the amplitude envelope generator and the envelope generator which is affecting the filter. Now you can hear it sounding more like a kick. We can adjust the pitch of the kick by bringing the cutoff up and down. For the snare, load up an init program again, turn down the VCO1 and turn up the noise oscillator. Using the amp envelope generator, let's shape this a little bit more. I like to use the delay in the middle log to make it sound a little bit more metallic. I'm going to take off a few more of the high frequencies with the cutoff and then I'm going to record it in. For that we want to take a very similar procedure, load up a new init program and we'll take out the VCO1 straight away and add the noise filter. Let's have a listen to the pattern that I recorded. Now to give it more definition, we're going to use the amplitude envelope generator again to shape it ever so slightly. To give it a slightly higher pitch, let's add some resonance. And to give it a little movement, let's add some LFO to the cutoff.
The toms work in a similar way to the kick. So let's have a listen to the pattern. Bring the cutoff all the way down and the resonance all the way up. Now what's important in this patch is to make sure that key track is on and basically what that means is as the notes move further up the keyboard and get higher in pitch, the cutoff will open ever so slightly to compensate for that. So let's turn that on. Next let's increase the envelope generator intensity and shape that envelope. And let's also shape the amplitude envelope. Now if you want to get an almost FM like sound from these toms that make them even more interesting, go to the other foe, select the cutoff, increase the rate all the way to the max and then dial in the intensity. This gives them an added bit of character which I really love. To make the laser clap I'm going to turn down VCO1 and turn up VCO2. Should sound something like this. The reason for this is because VCO2 can be modulated by the pitch envelope generator. Let's try increasing it and seeing how that sounds. The pitch envelope can be changed by this ADSR right here. Let's try editing that. Fill the rides obviously, it's initial program again and then we are going to take down VCO1 and increase that noise oscillator. To make this more ride like let's use the amplitude envelope generator to shape the ADSR. Now I actually like to use the filter on the delay to cut off some of the low frequencies to thin it out ever so slightly. So I'm going to switch it to post filter and then edit it. To get it sounding a little thinner I can always add a bit of resonance. Okay, so after recording the parts, tweaking them a little bit and sprinkling some of my mixing fairy dust on them, this is what it sounds like. Roll, first attempt to possibly worst ever music video. If you're not sure how to mix your sounds, I'll leave a link in the description above where I did a video to mixing your drums. So it's a really simple video showing you how to break things down, get them sounding really nice and balanced and tight. Every month I'm going to be mixing your drums, so I'll leave a link in the description below. You can send in your beats and I'm going to mix them live on this channel for free. I really hope you enjoyed this one, it's been a lot of fun and if you like it we're going to continue with it, we're going to do it a few more times. If you get a second please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you very shortly, peace.